The Cherokee, Cherokee, translate. Aniavuya or Cherokee, translate. Salaji are one of the indigenous people of the southeastern woodlands. Prior to the 18th century, they were concentrated in southwestern North Carolina, southeastern Tennessee, and the tips of western South Carolina and northeastern Georgia. The Cherokee language is part of the Iroquoian language group. In the 19th century, James Mooney, an American ethnographer, recorded one oral tradition that told of the tribe having migrated south in ancient times from the Great Lakes region, where other Iroquoian speaking peoples lived. However, anthropologist Thomas R. White writes that the origin of the Proto Iroquoian language was likely the Appalachian region, and the split between Northern and Southern Iroquoian languages began 4,000 years ago. Today, there are three federally recognized Cherokee tribes the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians in North Carolina. Carolina, the United Kituwa Band of Cherokee Indians UKB in Oklahoma, and the Cherokee Nation CN in Oklahoma. By the 19th century, European settlers in the United States classified the Cherokee of the Southeast as one of the five civilized tribes because they were agrarian and lived in permanent villages and began to adopt some cultural and technological practices of the European American settlers. The Cherokee were one of the first, if not the first, major non-European ethnic group to become U.S. citizens. Article 8 in the 1817 Treaty with the Cherokee stated that Cherokees may wish to become citizens of the United States. The Cherokee Nation has more than 300,000 tribal members, making it the largest of the 567 federally recognized tribes in the United States. In addition, numerous groups claim Cherokee lineage, and some of these are state-recognized. A total of more than 819,000 people claim having Cherokee ancestry on the U.S. Census, which includes persons who are not enrolled members of any tribe. Of the three federally recognized Cherokee tribes, the Cherokee Nation and the UKB have headquarters in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. The UKB are mostly descendants of old settlers. Cherokee who migrated to Arkansas and Oklahoma about 1817 prior to Indian removal. They are related to the Cherokee who were later forcibly relocated there in the 1830s under the Indian Removal Act. The Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians is on the Kuala boundary in western North Carolina. Their ancestors resisted or avoided relocation, remaining in the area. Topic: <laughs> Name A Cherokee language name for Cherokee people is Aniavuyi translating as principal people salaji is the cherokee word for cherokee many theories though none proven abound about the origin of the name cherokee it may have originally been derived from the choctaw word chalaki which means people who live in the mountains or choctaw kai luk ik bai meaning people who live in the cave country the earliest spanish transliteration of the name from 1755 is recorded as chalaque Another theory is that Cherokee derives from a lower creek word Sivlak, Chulag G. The Iroquois Five Nations based in New York have historically called the Cherokee Oyatajaranon, inhabitants of the cave country. Also the word Cherokee means people of different speech. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Origins. Anthropologists and historians have two main theories of Cherokee origins. One is that the Cherokee, an Iroquoian-speaking people, are relative latecomers to southern Appalachia, who may have migrated in late prehistoric times from northern areas around the Great Lakes, the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee nations and other Iroquoian-speaking peoples. Another theory is that the Cherokee had been in the southeast for thousands of years. Researchers in the 19th century recorded conversations with elders who recounted an oral tradition of the Cherokee people migrating south from the Great Lakes region in ancient times. They may have moved south into Muscogee Creek territory and settled at the sites of mounds built by the Mississippian culture and earlier mound builders. In the 19th century, European-American settlers mistakenly attributed several Mississippian culture sites in Georgia to the Cherokee, including Moundville and Etowa Mounds. However, other evidence shows that the Cherokee did not reach this part of Georgia until the late 18th century and could not have built the mounds. The Conestee people, believed to be ancestors of the Cherokee, occupied western North Carolina circa 200–600 CE pre-contact Cherokee are considered to be part of the later Pisgah phase of southern Appalachia, which lasted from circa 1000 to 1500. 
Despite the consensus among most specialists in Southeast archaeology and anthropology, some scholars contend that ancestors of the Cherokee people lived in western North Carolina and eastern Tennessee for a far longer period of time. During the late Archaic and Woodland period, Native Americans in the region began to cultivate plants such as marsh elder, lambsquarters, pigweed, sunflowers, and some native squash. People created new art forms such as shell gorgets, adopted new technologies, and developed an elaborate cycle of religious ceremonies. During the Mississippian culture period 800 to 1500 CE, local women developed a new variety of maize corn called eastern flint corn. It closely resembled modern corn and produced larger crops. The successful cultivation of corn surpluses allowed the rise of larger, more complex chiefdoms consisting of several villages and concentrated populations during this period. Corn became celebrated among numerous peoples in religious ceremonies, especially the green corn ceremony. <laughs> Early cultures. Much of what is known about pre-18th century Native American cultures has come from records of Spanish expeditions. The earliest ones of the mid-16th century encountered people of the Mississippian culture, the ancestors to later tribes in the southeast such as the Muscogee Creek and Catawba. Specifically in 1540–41, a Spanish expedition led by Hernando de Soto passed through what was later characterized as Cherokee country by English colonists based on their historical encounter. De Soto's expedition visited villages in present-day western Georgia and eastern Tennessee, recording them as ruled by the Coosa chiefdom. It is now considered to be a chiefdom ancestral to the Muscogee Creek people, who are from a different language and cultural group. The Spanish recorded a Chilock nation as living around the Kiwi River where North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia meet. As some of this work was not translated into English until the 20th century, alternative views had developed among English-speaking historians, related to the limited understanding by English colonists of historic Native American cultures in the Southeast. In addition, the dominance of English colonists in the Southeast led to a discounting of Spanish sources for some time in their construction of history of the area. The American writer John Howard Payne wrote about pre-19th century Cherokee culture and society. The Payne papers describe the account by Cherokee elders of a traditional two-part societal structure. A white organization of elders represented the seven clans. As Payne recounted, this group, which was hereditary and priestly, was responsible for religious activities, such as healing, purification, and prayer. A second group of younger men, the red organization, was responsible for warfare. The Cherokee considered warfare a polluting activity. After warfare, the warriors required purification by the priestly class before participants could reintegrate into normal village life. This hierarchy had disappeared long before the 18th century. Researchers have debated the reasons for the change. Some historians believe the decline in priestly power originated with a revolt by the Cherokee against the abuses of the priestly class known as the Ani Kutani. Ethnographer James Mooney, who studied the Cherokee in the late 1880s, was the first to trace the decline of the former hierarchy to this revolt. By the time that Mooney was studying the people, the structure of Cherokee religious practitioners was more informal, based more on individual knowledge and ability than upon heredity. Another major source of early cultural history comes from materials written in the 19th century by the Didanviwaisgi, Cherokee medicine men, after Sequoia's creation of the Cherokee syllabary in the 1820s. Initially only the Didanviwaisgi learned to write and read such materials, which were considered extremely powerful in a spiritual sense. Later, the syllabary and writings were widely adopted by the Cherokee people. Unlike most other Native Americans in the American Southeast at the start of the historic era, the Cherokee spoke an Iroquoian language, an indication of their migration from another area. Since the Great Lakes region was the territory of most Iroquoian language speakers, scholars have theorized that the Cherokee migrated south from that region. This view is supported by the Cherokee oral history tradition. According to the scholars' theory, the Tuscarora, another Iroquoian-speaking people who inhabited the southeast in historic times, and the Cherokee broke off from the major group during its northern migration. Other historians hold that, judging from linguistic and cultural data, the Tuscarora people migrated south from other Iroquoian-speaking people in the Great Lakes region in ancient times. 
After extended harsh warfare in the southeast, in the 1700s, the Tuscarora left the area and returned to the New York area, counting their tribal migration complete by 1722. The Iroquois Five Nations accepted the Tuscarora as the sixth nation of their political confederacy, known as the Haudenosaunee. Linguistic analysis shows a relatively large difference between Cherokee and the northern Iroquoian languages, suggesting they had migrated long ago. Scholars posit a split between the groups in the distant past, perhaps 3,500 to 3,800 years ago. Glottochronology studies suggest the split occurred between about 1500 and 1800 BCE. The Cherokee have claimed the ancient settlement of Kituwa on the Tuxigi River as the original Cherokee settlement in the southeast. It was formerly adjacent to and is now part of Kuala Boundary the reserve of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians in North Carolina. History. Topic: 17th century English contact. In 1657, there was a disturbance in Virginia Colony as the Richahickrians or Rickahawkins, as well as the Siouan Manahoac and Nahissan, broke through the frontier and settled near the Falls of the James, near present-day Richmond, Virginia. The following year, a combined force of English and Pamunkey drove the newcomers away. The identity of the Richahickrians has been much debated. Historians noted the name closely resembled that recorded for the Erie Cronon or Arielhonan, commonly known as the Erie tribe, another Iroquoian-speaking people based near the Great Lakes. This Iroquoian people had been driven away from the southern shore of Lake Erie in 1654 by the powerful Iroquois Five Nations, who were seeking more hunting grounds. The anthropologist Martin Smith theorized some remnants of the tribe migrated to Virginia after the wars 1986 -131 later becoming known as the Westo to English in the Carolina colony. A few historians suggest this tribe was Cherokee. Virginian traders developed a small-scale trading system with the Cherokee in the Piedmont before the end of the 17th century. The earliest recorded Virginia trader to live among the Cherokee was Cornelius Doherty or Doherty, in 1690. The Cherokee were among the Native American peoples who sold the traders Indian slaves for use as laborers in Virginia and further north. They took them as captives in raids on enemy tribes. Topic: 18th century. The Cherokee gave sanctuary to a band of Shawnee in the 1660s, but from 1710 to 1715, the Cherokee and Chickasaw allied with the British and fought the Shawnee, who were allied with the French, and forced them to move northward. The Cherokee fought with the Yamasee, Catawba, and British in late 1712 and early 1713 against the Tuscarora in the Second Tuscarora War. The Tuscarora War marked the beginning of a British-Cherokee relationship that, despite breaking down on occasion, remained strong for much of the 18th century. With the growth of the deerskin trade, the Cherokee were considered valuable trading partners, since deerskins from the cooler country of their mountain hunting grounds were of a better quality than those supplied by the lowland tribes who were neighbors of the English colonists. In January 1716, Cherokee murdered a delegation of Muscogee Creek leaders at the town of Tugaloo, marking their entry into the Yamasee War. It ended in 1717 with peace treaties between the colony of South Carolina and the Creek. Hostility and sporadic raids between the Cherokee and Creek continued for decades. These raids came to a head at the Battle of Taliwa in 1755, present-day Ball Ground, Georgia, with the defeat of the Muscogee. In 1721, the Cherokee ceded lands in South Carolina. In 1730, at Nikwasi, a former Mississippian culture site, a Scots adventurer, Sir Alexander Cumming, crowned Moitoy of Teleco as Emperor of the Cherokee. Moitoy agreed to recognize King George II of Great Britain as the Cherokee protector. Cumming arranged to take seven prominent Cherokee, including Atticulacula, to London, England. There, the Cherokee delegation signed the Treaty of Whitehall with the British. Moitoy's son, Amos Kasite, Dreadful Water, attempted to succeed him as emperor in 1741, but the Cherokee elected their own leader, Kanakotako Old Hop of Chota. Political power among the Cherokee remained decentralized, and towns acted autonomously. 
In 1735 the Cherokee were estimated to have 64 towns and villages, and 6,000 fighting men. In 1738 and 1739 smallpox epidemics broke out among the Cherokee, who had no natural immunity to the new infectious disease. Nearly half their population died within a year. Hundreds of other Cherokee committed suicide due to their losses and disfigurement from the disease. American colonist Henry Timberlake described the Cherokee people as he saw them in 1761. The Cherokees are of a middle stature, of an olive color, though generally painted, and their skin stained with gun powder, pricked into it in very pretty figures. The hair of their head is shaved, though many of the old people have it plucked out by the roots, except a patch on the hinder part of the head, about twice the bigness of a crown piece, which is ornamented with beads, feathers, wampum, stained deer's hair, and such like baubles. The ears are slit and stretched to an enormous size, putting the person who undergoes the operation to incredible pain, being unable to lie on either side for nearly forty days. To remedy this, they generally slit but one at a time, so soon as the patient can bear it, they wound round with wire to expand them, and are adorned with silver pendants and rings, which they likewise wear at the nose. This custom does not belong originally to the Cherokees, but taken by them from the Shawnees, or other northern nations. They that can afford it wear a collar of wampum, which are beads cut out of clam shells, a silver breastplate, and bracelets on their arms and wrists of the same metal, a bit of cloth over their private parts, a shirt of the English make, a sort of cloth boots, and moccasins sick, which are shoes of a make peculiar to the Americans, ornamented with porcupine quills, a large mantle or match coat thrown over all complete their dress at home. From 1753 to 1755, battles broke out between the Cherokee and Muscogee over disputed hunting grounds in North Georgia. The Cherokee were victorious in the Battle of Taliwa. British soldiers built forts in Cherokee country to defend against the French in the Seven Years' War, which was fought across Europe and was called the French and Indian War on the North American Front. These included Fort Loden near Chota. In 1756 the Cherokee were allies of the British in the French and Indian War. Serious misunderstandings arose quickly between the two allies, resulting in the 1760 Anglo-Cherokee War. King George III's Royal Proclamation of 1763 forbade British settlements west of the Appalachian Crest, as his government tried to afford some protection from colonial encroachment to the Cherokee and other tribes. The Crown found the ruling difficult to enforce with colonists. In 1771 to 1772, North Carolinian settlers squatted on Cherokee lands in Tennessee, forming the Watauga Association. Daniel Boone and his party tried to settle in Kentucky, but the Shawnee, Delaware, Mingo, and some Cherokee attacked a scouting and forage party that included Boone's son. The American Indians used this territory as a hunting ground by right of conquest, it had hardly been inhabited for years. The conflict in Kentucky sparked the beginning of what was known as Dunmore's War 1773 In 1776, allied with the Shawnee led by Cornstalk, Cherokee attacked settlers in South Carolina, Georgia, Virginia, and North Carolina in the Second Cherokee War. Overhill Cherokee Nancy Ward, dragging canoe's cousin, warned settlers of impending attacks. Provincial militias retaliated, destroying more than 50 Cherokee towns. North Carolina militia in 1776 and 1780 invaded and destroyed the Overhill towns. In 1777, surviving Cherokee town leaders signed treaties with the new states. Dragging Canoe and his band settled along Chickamauga Creek near present-day Chattanooga, Tennessee, where they established 11 new towns. Chickamauga Town was his headquarters and the colonists tended to call his entire band the Chickamauga to distinguish them from other Cherokee. From here he fought a guerrilla war against settlers, which lasted from 1776 to 1794. These are known informally as the Cherokee-American Wars, but this is not an historian's term. The first Treaty of Teleco Blockhouse, signed November 7, 1794, finally brought peace between the Cherokee and Americans, who had achieved independence from the British Crown. In 1805, the Cherokee ceded their lands between the Cumberland and Duck Rivers i.e. the Cumberland Plateau to Tennessee. Topic: <laughs> Scots and other Europeans among the Cherokee in the 18th century. The traders and British government agents dealing with the southern tribes in general, and the Cherokee in particular, were nearly all of Scottish ancestry, with many documented as being from the Highlands. 
A few were Scots-Irish, English, French, and German see Scottish Indian trade. Many of these men married women from their host peoples and remained after the fighting had ended. Some had mixed-race children who would later become significant leaders among the five civilized tribes of the southeast. Notable traders, agents, and refugee Tories among the Cherokee included John Stewart, Henry Stewart, Alexander Cameron, John MacDonald, John Joseph Van, father of James Van, Daniel Ross, father of John Ross, John Walker Sr., John McLemore, father of Bob, William Buchanan, John Watts, father of John Watts Jr., John D. Chisholm, John Benge, father of Bob Benge, Thomas Brown. John Rogers, Welsh; John Gunter, German, founder of Gunter's Landing; James Adair, Irish; William Thorpe, English; and Peter Hildebrand, German, among many others. Some attained the honorary status of minor chiefs and/or members of significant delegations. By contrast, a large portion of the settlers encroaching on the Native American territories were Scots-Irish, Irish from Ulster who were of Scottish descent and had been part of the English plantation of Northern Ireland. They also tended to support the revolution. But in the back country, there were also Scots-Irish who were loyalists, such as Simon Gerty. Topic: 19th century. Topic: <inaudible> Acculturation. <inaudible> 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 The Cherokee lands between the Tennessee and Chattahoochee rivers were remote enough from white settlers to remain independent after the Cherokee-American Wars. The deerskin trade was no longer feasible on their greatly reduced lands, and over the next several decades, the people of the fledgling Cherokee Nation began to build a new society modeled on the white southern United States. George Washington sought to civilize southeastern American Indians. Through programs overseen by the Indian agent Benjamin Hawkins, he encouraged the Cherokee to abandon their communal land tenure and settle on individual farmsteads, which was facilitated by the destruction of many American Indian towns during the American Revolutionary War. The deerskin trade brought white tailed deer to the brink of extinction, and as pigs and cattle were introduced, they became the principal sources of meat. The government supplied the tribes with spinning wheels and cotton seed, and men were taught to fence and plow the land, in contrast to their traditional division in which crop cultivation was women's labor. Americans instructed the women in weaving. Eventually Hawkins helped them set up smithies, gristmills and cotton plantations. The Cherokee organized a national government under Principal Chiefs Little Turkey (1788–1801), Black Fox (1801–1811), and Pathkiller (1811–1827), all former warriors of Dragging Canoe. The Cherokee Triumvirate of James Van and his protégés, the Ridge and Charles R. Hicks, advocated acculturation, formal education, and modern methods of farming. In 1801 they invited Moravian missionaries from North Carolina to teach Christianity and the arts of civilized life, the Moravians and later Congregationalist missionaries ran boarding schools, and a select few students were educated at the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions School in Connecticut. In 1806 a federal road from Savannah, Georgia to Knoxville, Tennessee was built through Cherokee land. Chief James Van opened a tavern, inn and ferry across the Chattahoochee and built a cotton plantation on a spur of the road from Athens, Georgia to Nashville. His son Rich Joe Van developed the plantation to 800 acres square kilometers, cultivated by 150 slaves. He exported cotton to England, and owned a steamboat on the Tennessee River. The Cherokee allied with the U.S. against the nativist and pro-British Red Stick faction of the Upper Creek in the Creek War during the War of 1812. Cherokee warriors led by Major Ridge played a major role in General Andrew Jackson's victory at the Battle of Horseshoe Bend. Major Ridge moved his family to Rome, Georgia, where he built a substantial house, developed a large plantation and ran a ferry on the Ustanella River. Although he never learned English, he sent his son and nephews to New England to be educated in mission schools. His interpreter and protege Chief John Ross, the descendant of several generations of Cherokee women and Scots fur traders, built a plantation and operated a trading firm and a ferry at Ross Landing Chattanooga, Tennessee. During this period, divisions arose between the acculturated elite and the great majority of Cherokee, who clung to traditional ways of life. Around 1809 Sequoia began developing a written form of the Cherokee language. He spoke no English, but his experiences as a silversmith dealing regularly with white settlers, and as a warrior at Horseshoe Bend, convinced him the Cherokee needed to develop writing. 
In 1821, he introduced Cherokee syllabary, the first written syllabic form of an American Indian language outside of Central America. Initially his innovation was opposed by both Cherokee traditionalists and white missionaries, who sought to encourage the use of English. When Sequoia taught children to read and write with the syllabary, he reached the adults. By the 1820s, the Cherokee had a higher rate of literacy than the whites around them in Georgia. In 1819, the Cherokee began holding council meetings at New Town, at the headwaters of the Ustanella near present-day Calhoun, Georgia. In November 1825, New Town became the capital of the Cherokee Nation, and was renamed New Echota, after the Overhill Cherokee principal town of Chota. Sequoia's syllabary was adopted. They had developed a police force, a judicial system, and a national committee. In 1827, the Cherokee Nation drafted a constitution modeled on the United States, with executive, legislative and judicial branches and a system of checks and balances. The two-tiered legislature was led by Major Ridge and his son John Ridge. Convinced the tribe's survival required English-speaking leaders who could negotiate with the U.S., the legislature appointed John Ross as principal chief. A printing press was established at New Echota by the Vermont missionary Samuel Worcester and Major Ridge's nephew Elias Boudinot, who had taken the name of his white benefactor, a leader of the Continental Congress and New Jersey congressman. They translated the Bible into Cherokee syllabary. Boudinot published the first edition of the bilingual Cherokee Phoenix, the first American Indian newspaper, in February 1828. Removal era Before the final removal to present-day Oklahoma, many Cherokees relocated to present-day Arkansas, Missouri and Texas. Between 1775 and 1786 the Cherokee, along with people of other nations such as the Choctaw and Chickasaw, began voluntarily settling along the Arkansas and Red Rivers. In 1802, the federal government promised to extinguish Indian titles to lands claimed by Georgia in return for Georgia's cession of the western lands that became Alabama and Mississippi. To convince the Cherokee to move voluntarily in 1815, the U.S. government established a Cherokee reservation in Arkansas. The reservation boundaries extended from north of the Arkansas River to the southern bank of the White River. Diwali the Bowl, Sequoia, Spring Frog and Totsi Dutch and their bands settled there. These Cherokees became known as Old Settlers. The Cherokee, eventually, migrated as far north as the Missouri Bootheel by 1816. They lived interspersed among the Delawares and Shawnees of that area. The Cherokee in Missouri Territory increased rapidly in population, from 1,000 to 6,000 over the next year 1816 to 1817, according to reports by Governor William Clark. Increased conflicts with the Osage Nation led to the Battle of Claremore Mound and the eventual establishment of Fort Smith between Cherokee and Osage communities. In the Treaty of St. Louis 1825, the Osage were made to cede and relinquish to the United States, all their right, title, interest, and claim, to lands lying within the state of Missouri and territory of Arkansas." To make room for the Cherokee and the Mashku, Muscogee Creeks. As late as the winter of 1838, Cherokee and Creek living in the Missouri and Arkansas areas petitioned the War Department to remove the Osage from the area. A group of Cherokee traditionalists led by Diwali moved to Spanish Texas in 1819. Settling near Nacogdoches, they were welcomed by Mexican authorities as potential allies against Anglo-American colonists. The Texas Cherokees were mostly neutral during the Texas War of Independence. In 1836, they signed a treaty with Texas President Sam Houston, an adopted member of the Cherokee tribe. His successor Mirabeau Lamar sent militia to evict them in 1839. Trail of Tears During the first decades of the 19th century, Georgia focused on removing the Cherokee's neighbors, the Lower Creek. The Georgia governor George Troop and his cousin William McIntosh, chief of the Lower Creek, signed the Treaty of Indian Springs 1825, ceding the last Muscogee Creek lands claimed by Georgia. The state's northwestern border reached the Chattahoochee, the border of the Cherokee Nation. In 1829, gold was discovered at Dahlonega, on Cherokee land claimed by Georgia. The Georgia Gold Rush was the first in U.S. history, and state officials demanded that the federal government expel the Cherokee. 
When Andrew Jackson was inaugurated as president in 1829, Georgia gained a strong ally in Washington. In 1830 Congress passed the Indian Removal Act, authorizing the forcible relocation of American Indians east of the Mississippi to a new Indian territory. Andrew Jackson said the removal policy was an effort to prevent the Cherokee from facing extinction as a people, which he considered the fate that the Mohegan, the Narragansett, and the Delaware had suffered. But, there is ample evidence that the Cherokee were adapting modern farming techniques. A modern analysis shows that the area was in general in a state of economic surplus and could have accommodated both the Cherokee and new settlers. The Cherokee brought their grievances to a U.S. judicial review that set a precedent in Indian country. John Ross traveled to Washington, D.C., and won support from National Republican Party leaders Henry Clay and Daniel Webster. Samuel Worcester campaigned on behalf of the Cherokee in New England, where their cause was taken up by Ralph Waldo Emerson see Emerson's 1838 letter to Martin Van Buren. In June 1830, a delegation led by Chief Ross defended Cherokee rights before the U.S. Supreme Court in Cherokee Nation v. Georgia. In 1831 Georgia militia arrested Samuel Worcester for residing on Indian lands without a state permit, imprisoning him in Milledgeville. In Worcester v. Georgia 1832, the U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Marshall ruled that American Indian nations were "...distinct, independent political communities retaining their original natural rights," and entitled to federal protection from the actions of state governments that infringed on their sovereignty. Worcester v. Georgia is considered one of the most important dicta in law dealing with Native Americans. Jackson ignored the Supreme Court's ruling, as he needed to conciliate Southern sectionalism during the era of the nullification crisis. His landslide re-election in 1832 emboldened calls for Cherokee removal. Georgia sold Cherokee lands to its citizens in a land lottery, and the state militia occupied New Dakota. The Cherokee National Council, led by John Ross, fled to Red Clay, a remote valley north of Georgia's land claim. Ross had the support of Cherokee traditionalists, who could not imagine removal from their ancestral lands. A small group known as the Ridge Party, or the Treaty Party, saw relocation as inevitable and believed the Cherokee Nation needed to make the best deal to preserve their rights in Indian territory. Led by Major Ridge, John Ridge and Elias Boudinot, they represented the Cherokee elite, whose homes, plantations and businesses were confiscated, or under threat of being taken by white squatters with Georgia land titles. With capital to acquire new lands, they were more inclined to accept relocation. On December 29, 1835, the Ridge Party signed the Treaty of New Dakota, stipulating terms and conditions for the removal of the Cherokee Nation. In return for their lands, the Cherokee were promised a large tract in the Indian Territory, $5 million, and $300,000 for improvements on their new lands. John Ross gathered over 15,000 signatures for a petition to the U.S. Senate, insisting that the treaty was invalid because it did not have the support of the majority of the Cherokee people. The Senate passed the Treaty of New Dakota by a one vote margin. It was enacted into law in May 1836. Two years later, President Martin Van Buren ordered 7,000 federal troops and state militia under General Winfield Scott into Cherokee lands to evict the tribe. Over 16,000 Cherokee were forcibly relocated westward to Indian Territory in 1838 1839, a migration known as the Trail of Tears or in Cherokee or NVNA Dala TSVYI the trail where they cried, although it is described by another word TLOVA saw the removal. Marched over 800 miles 1, kilometers across Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, Missouri and Arkansas, the people suffered from disease, exposure and starvation, and as many as 4,000 died. As some Cherokees were slaveholders, they took enslaved African Americans with them west of the Mississippi. Intermarried European Americans and missionaries also walked the Trail of Tears. Ross preserved a vestige of independence by negotiating permission for the Cherokee to conduct their own removal under U.S. supervision, in keeping with the tribe's blood law that prescribed the death penalty for Cherokee who sold lands. Ross's son arranged the murder of the leaders of the Treaty Party. On June 22, 1839, a party of 25 Ross supporters assassinated Major Ridge, John Ridge, and Elias Boudinot. The party included Daniel Colston, John Van, Archibald, James, and Joseph Speer. Boudinot's brother Stan Waddy fought and survived that day, escaping to Arkansas. 
In 1827, Sequoia had led a delegation of old settlers to Washington, D.C. to negotiate for the exchange of Arkansas land for land in Indian Territory. After the Trail of Tears, he helped mediate divisions between the old settlers and the rival factions of the more recent arrivals. In 1839, as president of the Western Cherokee, Sequoia signed an act of union with John Ross that reunited the two groups of the Cherokee Nation. Eastern Band The Akonalufti Cherokee of the Great Smoky Mountains were the most conservative and isolated from European American settlements. They rejected the reforms of the Cherokee Nation. When the Cherokee government ceded all territory east of the Little Tennessee River to North Carolina in 1819, they withdrew from the nation. William Holland Thomas, a white store owner and state legislator from Jackson County, North Carolina, helped over 600 Cherokee from Kuala Town obtain North Carolina citizenship, which exempted them from forced removal. Over 400 Cherokee either hid from federal troops in the remote Snowbird Mountains, under the leadership of Sali, or belonged to the former Valley Towns area around the Choa River who negotiated with the state government to stay in North Carolina. An additional 400 Cherokee stayed on reserves in southeast Tennessee, north Georgia, and northeast Alabama, as citizens of their respective states. They were mostly mixed race and Cherokee women married to white men. Together, these groups were the ancestors of the federally recognized Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians, and some of the state-recognized tribes in surrounding states. <laughs> Civil War The American Civil War was devastating for both East and Western Cherokee. The Eastern Band, aided by William Thomas, became the Thomas Legion of Cherokee Indians and Highlanders, fighting for the Confederacy in the American Civil War. Cherokee in Indian Territory divided into Union and Confederate factions, with most supporting the Confederacy. Stand Waddy, the leader of the Ridge Party, raised a regiment for Confederate service in 1861. John Ross, who had reluctantly agreed to ally with the Confederacy, was captured by federal troops in 1862. He lived in self-imposed exile in Philadelphia, supporting the Union. In Indian Territory, the National Council of those who supported the Union voted to abolish slavery in the Cherokee Nation in 1863, but they were not the majority slaveholders and the vote had little effect on those supporting the Confederacy. Waddy was elected principal chief of the pro-Confederacy majority. A master of hit-and-run cavalry tactics, Waddy fought those Cherokee loyal to John Ross and federal troops in Indian Territory and Arkansas, capturing Union supply trains and steamboats, and saving a Confederate army by covering their retreat after the Battle of Pea Ridge in March 1862. He became a Brigadier General of the Confederate States. The only other American Indian to hold the rank in the American Civil War was Ely S. Parker with the Union Army. On June 25, 1865, two months after Robert E. Lee surrendered at Appomattox, Stand Waddy became the last Confederate general to stand down. <laughs> Reconstruction and late 19th century After the Civil War, the U.S. government required the Cherokee Nation to sign a new treaty, because of its alliance with the Confederacy. The U.S. required the 1866 Treaty to provide for the emancipation of all Cherokee slaves, and full citizenship to all Cherokee freedmen and all African Americans who chose to continue to reside within tribal lands, so that they "...shall have all the rights of native Cherokees." Both before and after the Civil War, some Cherokee intermarried or had relationships with African Americans, just as they had with whites. Many Cherokee freedmen have been active politically within the tribe. The U.S. government also acquired easement rights to the western part of the territory, which became the Oklahoma Territory, for the construction of railroads. Development and settlers followed the railroads. By the late 19th century, the government believed that Native Americans would be better off if each family owned its own land. The Dawes Act of 1887 provided for the breakup of commonly held tribal land into individual household allotments. Native Americans were registered on the Dawes Rolls and allotted land from the Common Reserve. The U.S. government counted the remainder of tribal land as surplus and sold it to non-Cherokee individuals. The Curtis Act of 1898 dismantled tribal governments, courts, schools, and other civic institutions. 
For Indian territory, this meant abolition of the Cherokee courts and governmental systems. This was seen as necessary before the Oklahoma and Indian territories could be admitted as a combined state. In 1905, the five civilized tribes of the Indian Territory proposed the creation of the state of Sequoia as one to be exclusively Native American, but failed to gain support in Washington, D.C. In 1907, the Oklahoma and Indian Territories entered the Union as the state of Oklahoma. By the late 19th century, the Eastern Band of Cherokee were laboring under the constraints of a segregated society. In the aftermath of Reconstruction, conservative white Democrats regained power in North Carolina and other southern states. They proceeded to effectively disenfranchise all blacks and many poor whites by new constitutions and laws related to voter registration and elections. They passed Jim Crow laws that divided society into white and colored, mostly to control freedmen. Cherokee and other Native Americans were classified on the colored side and suffered the same racial segregation and disenfranchisement as former slaves. They also often lost their historical documentation for identification as Indians, when the southern states classified them as colored. Blacks and Native Americans would not have their constitutional rights as U.S. citizens enforced until after the civil rights movement secured passage of civil rights legislation in the mid-1960s, and the federal government began to monitor voter registration and elections, as well as other programs. Culture Topic: Cultural institutions. The Kuala Arts and Crafts Mutual Inc. of Cherokee, North Carolina, is the oldest continuing Native American art cooperative. They were founded in 1946 to provide a venue for traditional Eastern Band Cherokee artists. The Museum of the Cherokee Indian, also in Cherokee, displays permanent and changing exhibits, houses archives and collections important to Cherokee history, and sponsors cultural groups, such as the Warriors of the Anakituwa Dance Group. In 2007, the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians entered into a partnership with Southwestern Community College and Western Carolina University to create the Okonolufti Institute for Cultural Arts (OICA) to emphasize native art and culture in traditional fine arts education, thus preserving traditional art forms and encouraging exploration of contemporary ideas. Located in Cherokee, OICA offered an associate's degree program. In August 2010, OICA acquired a letterpress and had the Cherokee syllabary recast to begin printing one-of-a-kind fine art books and prints in the Cherokee language. In 2012, the Fine Art Degree Program at OICA was incorporated into Southwestern Community College and moved to the SCC Swain Center, where it continues to operate. The Cherokee Heritage Center, of Park Hill, Oklahoma hosts a reproduction of an ancient Cherokee village, Adams Rural Village, including 19th century buildings, Nafir Farms, and the Cherokee Family Research Center for Genealogy. The Cherokee Heritage Center also houses the Cherokee National Archives. Both the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma and the United Kituwa Band of Cherokee, as well as other tribes, contribute funding to the CHC. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Marriage. Before the 19th century, polygamy was common among the Cherokee, especially by elite men. The matrilineal culture meant that women controlled property, such as their dwellings, and their children were considered born into their mother's clan, where they gained hereditary status. Advancement to leadership positions was generally subject to approval by the women elders. In addition, the society was matrifocal. Customarily, a married couple lived with or near the woman's family, so she could be aided by her female relatives. Her oldest brother was a more important mentor to her sons than was their father, who belonged to another clan. Traditionally, couples, particularly women, can divorce freely. It was unusual for a Cherokee man to marry a European American woman. The children of such a union were disadvantaged, as they would not belong to the nation. They would be born outside the clans and traditionally were not considered Cherokee citizens. This is because of the matrilineal aspect of Cherokee culture. As the Cherokee began to adopt some elements of European American culture in the early 19th century, they sent elite young men, such as John Ridge and Elias Boudinot to American schools for education. 
After Ridge had married a European American woman from Connecticut and Boudinot was engaged to another, the Cherokee Council in 1825 passed a law making children of such unions full citizens of the tribe, as if their mothers were Cherokee. This was a way to protect the families of men expected to be leaders of the tribe. In the late 19th century, the U.S. government put new restrictions on marriage between a Cherokee and non Cherokee, although it was still relatively common. A European American man could legally marry a Cherokee woman by petitioning the federal court, after gaining approval of ten of her blood relatives. Once married, the man had status as an intermarried white. A member of the Cherokee tribe with restricted rights, for instance, he could not hold any tribal office. He remained a citizen of and under the laws of the United States. Common law marriages were more popular. Such intermarried whites were listed in a separate category on the registers of the Dawes Rolls, prepared for allotment of plots of land to individual households of members of the tribe, in the early 20th century federal policy for assimilation of the Native Americans. Topic. Ethnobotany See Cherokee ethnobotany Topic. Language and writing system The Cherokee speak a Southern Iroquoian language, which is polysynthetic and is written in a syllabary invented by Sequoia. For years, many people wrote transliterated Cherokee or used poorly intercompatible fonts to type out the syllabary. However, since the fairly recent addition of the Cherokee syllables to Unicode, the Cherokee language is experiencing a renaissance in its use on the Internet. Because of the polysynthetic nature of the Cherokee language, new and descriptive words in Cherokee are easily constructed to reflect or express modern concepts. Examples include de tiohihi, which means he argues repeatedly and on purpose with a purpose, meaning attorney. Another example is didanyizgi, which means the final catcher, or he catches them finally and conclusively, meaning policeman. Many words, however, have been borrowed from the English language, such as gasoline, which in Cherokee is gasoline. Many other words were borrowed from the languages of tribes who settled in Oklahoma in the early 20th century. One example relates to a town in Oklahoma named Nawada. The word Nawada is a Delaware Indian word for welcome. More precisely the Delaware word is new Waita which can mean welcome or friend in the Delaware language. The white settlers of the area used the name Nawada for the township, and local Cherokees, being unaware the word had its origins in the Delaware language, called the town Amadakanivnigna, which means the water is all gone from here i.e., no water. Other examples of borrowed words are kawi, for coffee and watsi, for watch, which led to Utana watsi, or big watch, for clock. The following table is an example of Cherokee text and its translation. <laughs> Treaties and government Topic. Treaties The Cherokee have participated in at least 36 treaties in the past 300 years. Topic. Government After being ravaged by smallpox, and feeling pressure from European settlers, the Cherokee adopted a European-American representative democracy form of government in an effort to retain their lands. They established a governmental system modeled on that of the United States, with an elected principal chief, Senate, and House of Representatives. On April 10, 1810 the seven Cherokee clans met and began the abolition of blood vengeance by giving the sacred duty to the new Cherokee national government. Clans formally relinquished judicial responsibilities by the 1820s when the Cherokee Supreme Court was established. In 1825, the National Council extended citizenship to the children of Cherokee men married to white women. These ideas were largely incorporated into the 1827 Cherokee Constitution. The Constitution stated that no person who is of Negro or mulatto sick parentage, either by the father or mother's side, shall be eligible to hold any office of profit, honor or trust under this government." With an exception for 
Negroes and descendants of white and Indian men by Negro women who may have been set free. This definition to limit rights of multiracial descendants may have been more widely held among the elite than the general population. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Modern Cherokee tribes. Topic: <laughs> 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 Cherokee Nation. During 1898–1906 the federal government dissolved the former Cherokee Nation, to make way for the incorporation of Indian Territory into the new state of Oklahoma. From 1906 to 1975, the structure and function of the tribal government were defunct, except for the purposes of DOI management. In 1975 the tribe drafted a constitution, which they ratified on June 26, 1976, and the tribe received federal recognition. In 1999, the CN changed or added several provisions to its constitution, among them the designation of the tribe to be Cherokee Nation, dropping of Oklahoma. According to a statement by BIA head Larry Echo Hawk, the Cherokee Nation is not the historical Cherokee tribe but instead a successor in interest. The attorney of the Cherokee Nation has stated that they intend to appeal this decision. The modern Cherokee Nation, in recent times, has experienced an almost unprecedented expansion in economic growth, equality, and prosperity for its citizens. The Cherokee Nation, under the leadership of Principal Chief Bill John Baker, has significant business, corporate, real estate, and agricultural interests. The CN controls Cherokee Nation entertainment, Cherokee Nation industries, and Cherokee Nation businesses. CNI is a very large defense contractor that creates thousands of jobs in eastern Oklahoma for Cherokee citizens. The CN has constructed health clinics throughout Oklahoma, contributed to community development programs, built roads and bridges, constructed learning facilities and universities for its citizens, instilled the practice of gadugi and self-reliance in its citizens, revitalized language immersion programs for its children and youth, and is a powerful and positive economic and political force in eastern Oklahoma. The CN hosts the Cherokee National Holiday on Labor Day weekend each year, and 80,000 to 90,000 Cherokee citizens travel to Tahlequah, Oklahoma, for the festivities. It publishes the Cherokee Phoenix, the tribal newspaper, published in both English and the Sequoia Syllabary. The Cherokee Nation Council appropriates money for historic foundations concerned with the preservation of Cherokee culture. The Cherokee Nation supports the Cherokee Nation Film Festivals in Tahlequah, Oklahoma and participates in the Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah. <laughs> Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians The Eastern Band of the Cherokee Indians in North Carolina, led by Chief Richard Sneed, Hosts over a million visitors a year to cultural attractions of the 100 square mile 260 square kilometers sovereign nation. The reservation, the Kuala Boundary, has a population of over 8,000 Cherokee, primarily direct descendants of Indians who managed to avoid the Trail of Tears. Attractions include the Akonalufti Indian Village, Museum of the Cherokee Indian, and the Kuala Arts and Crafts Mutual. Founded in 1946, the Kuala Arts and Crafts Mutual is country's oldest and foremost Native American crafts cooperative. The outdoor drama Unto These Hills, which debuted in 1950, recently broke record attendance sales. Together with Haraz Cherokee Casino and Hotel, Cherokee Indian Hospital and Cherokee Boys Club, the tribe generated $78 million in the local economy in 2005. United Kituwa Band of Cherokee Indians The United Kituwa Band of Cherokee Indians formed their government under the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 and gained federal recognition in 1946. Enrollment into the tribe is limited to people with a quarter or more of Cherokee blood. Many members of the UKB are descended from old settlers, Cherokees who moved to Arkansas and Indian Territory before the Trail of Tears. Of the 12,000 people enrolled in the tribe, 11,000 live in Oklahoma. Their chief is Joe Bunch. The UKB operate a tribal casino, bingo hall, smoke shop, fuel outlets, truck stop, and gallery that showcases art and crafts made by tribal members. 
The tribe issues their own tribal vehicle tags. Topic: <laughs> Relations among the three federally recognized Cherokee tribes. The Cherokee Nation participates in numerous joint programs with the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. It also participates in cultural exchange programs and joint tribal council meetings involving councilors from both Cherokee tribes. These are held to address issues affecting all of the Cherokee people. The administrations of the United Kituwa Band of Cherokee Indians and the Cherokee Nation have a somewhat adversarial relationship. The Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians interacts with the Cherokee Nation in a unified spirit of Gadugi. The United Kituwa Band Tribal Council unanimously passed a resolution to approach the Cherokee Nation for a joint council meeting between the two nations, as a means of offering the olive branch, in the words of the UKB Council. While a date was set for the meeting between members of the Cherokee Nation Council and UKB representative, former chief of the Cherokee Nation Chad Smith vetoed the meeting. 174 years after the Trail of Tears on July 12, 2012 the leaders of the three separate Cherokee communities met in North Carolina. Topic: <inaudible> Contemporary Settlement. Cherokees are most concentrated in Oklahoma and North Carolina, but some reside in the US West Coast due to economic migrations caused by the Dust Bowl during the Great Depression, job availability during the Second World War, and the Federal Indian Relocation Program during the 1950s to 1960s. Cherokees constitute over 2% of population of three largely rural communities in California: Covelo, Hayfork, and San Miguel, one town in Oregon and one town in Arizona. Destinations for Cherokee diaspora included multi-ethnic, racial urban centers of California i.e. the greater Los Angeles and SF Bay areas, and they usually live in farming communities, by military bases and other Indian reservations. <laughs> <laughs> Membership controversies Tribal recognition and membership The three Cherokee tribes have differing requirements for enrollment. The Cherokee Nation determines enrollment by lineal descent from Cherokees listed on the Dawes Rolls and has no minimum blood quantum requirement. Currently, descendants of the Dawes Cherokee Freedmen Rolls are members of the tribe, pending court decisions. The Cherokee Nation includes numerous members who have African American, Latino American, Asian American, European American, and other ancestry. The Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians requires a minimum 1 16th Cherokee blood quantum genealogical descent, equivalent to one great-great-grandparent and an ancestor on the Baker Roll. The United Kituwa Band of Cherokee Indians requires a minimum one quarter Kituwa Cherokee blood quantum, equivalent to one grandparent, and the UKB does not allow members that have relinquished their membership to re enroll in the UKB. In 2000, the U.S. Census reported 875,276 people self identified as Cherokee Indian, however, only 316,049 people were enrolled in the federally recognized Cherokee tribes. Over 200 groups claim to be Cherokee nations, tribes, or bands. Cherokee Nation spokesman Mike Miller has suggested that some groups, which he calls Cherokee heritage groups, are encouraged. Others, however, are controversial for their attempts to gain economically through their claims to be Cherokee. The three federally recognized groups assert themselves as the only groups having the legal right to present themselves as Cherokee Indian tribes and only their enrolled members as Cherokee. One exception to this may be the Texas Cherokees. Before 1975, they were considered a part of the Cherokee Nation, as reflected in briefs filed before the Indian Claims Commission. At one time, W.W. Keeler served not only as principal chief of the Cherokee Nation, but at the same time held the position as chairman of the Texas Cherokee and Associated Bands TCAB Executive Committee. Following the adoption of the Cherokee Constitution in 1976, TCAB descendants whose ancestors had remained a part of the physical Mount Tabor community in Rusk County, Texas were excluded from citizenship. Their ancestors did not appear on the final rolls of the five civilized tribes, registered under the Dawes Commission. However, most if not all TCAB descendants did have an ancestor listed on either the Guion Miller or Old Settler rolls. 
While most Mount Tabor residents returned to the Cherokee Nation following the death of John Ross in 1866, today there is a sizable group that is well documented but outside that body. It is not actively seeking a status clarification. They do have treaty rights going back to the Treaty of Bird's Fort. From the end of the Civil War until 1975, they were associated with the Cherokee Nation. The TCAB formed as a political organization in 1871 led by William Penn Adair and Clement Neely Van. Descendants of the Texas Cherokees and the Mount Tabor community joined together to try to gain redress from treaty violations, stemming from the Treaty of Bulls Village in 1836. Today, most Mount Tabor descendants are in fact members of the Cherokee Nation. Only some 800 are stuck in limbo without status as Cherokees. Many of them still reside in Rusk and Smith counties of East Texas. Other remnant populations continue to exist throughout the southeast United States and individually in the states surrounding Oklahoma. Many of these people trace descent from persons enumerated on official roles such as the Guion Miller, Drennan, Malay and Henderson roles, among others. Other descendants trace their heritage through the treaties of 1817 and 1819 with the federal government which gave individual allotments to Cherokees. State recognized tribes require varying levels of genealogical proof that applicants are of Cherokee descent. Current enrollment guidelines of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma have been approved by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Such facts were pointed out by Cherokee citizens of CN during the Constitutional Convention held to ratify a new governing document. The document that was eventually ratified by a small portion of the electorate. However, the tribe does not have the power to change its membership procedures and maintain federal recognition. Any changes to the tribe's enrollment procedures must be approved by the Department of Interior. Under 25 CFR 83 the Office of Federal Acknowledgement is required to first apply its own anthropological, genealogical, and historical research methods to any request for change by the tribe. It then forwards its recommendations to the Assistant Secretary, Indian Affairs for consideration. Cherokee freedmen The Cherokee freedmen, descendants of African-American slaves owned by citizens of the Cherokee Nation during the antebellum period, were first guaranteed Cherokee citizenship under a treaty with the United States in 1866. This was in the wake of the American Civil War, when the U.S. emancipated slaves and passed U.S. constitutional amendments granting freedmen citizenship in the United States. In 1988, the federal court in the Freedmen case of Nero v. Cherokee Nation held that Cherokees could decide citizenship requirements and exclude freedmen. On March 7, 2006, the Cherokee Nation Judicial Appeal Tribunal ruled that the Cherokee freedmen were eligible for Cherokee citizenship. This ruling proved controversial, while the Cherokee freedmen had historically been recorded as citizens of the Cherokee Nation at least since 1866 and the later Dawes Commission land rolls, the ruling did not limit membership to people possessing Cherokee blood. This ruling was consistent with the 1975 Constitution of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma, in its acceptance of the Cherokee freedmen on the basis of historical citizenship, rather than documented blood relation. On March 3, 2007 a constitutional amendment was passed by a Cherokee vote limiting citizenship to Cherokees on the Dawes Rolls for those listed as Cherokee by blood on the Dawes Roll, which did not include partial Cherokee descendants of slaves, Shawnee and Delaware. The Cherokee freedmen had 90 days to appeal this amendment vote which disenfranchised them from Cherokee citizenship and file appeal within the Cherokee Nation Tribal Council, which is currently pending in Nash, et al., v. Cherokee Nation Registrar. On May 14, 2007, the Cherokee freedmen were reinstated as citizens of the Cherokee Nation by the Cherokee Nation Tribal Courts through a temporary order and temporary injunction until the court reached its final decision. On January 14, 2011, the Tribal District Court ruled that the 2007 constitutional amendment was invalid because it conflicted with the 1866 treaty guaranteeing the freedmen's rights. Notable historical and current Cherokee This includes only Cherokee documented in history. Contemporary notable Cherokee people are listed in the articles for the appropriate tribe. 
For people who self-identify as having Cherokee heritage, see List of people of self-identified Cherokee ancestry. William Penn Adair (1830–1880), Cherokee senator and diplomat, Confederate colonel, chief of the Texas Cherokees and associate bands. Atticalacala C.A. 1708 C.A. 1777, diplomat to Britain, headman of Chota, chief. Bob Benj C.A. 1762–1794, warrior of the Lower Cherokee during the Cherokee American Wars. Elias Boudinot, Galagina (1802–1839), statesman, orator, and editor, founded first Cherokee newspaper, Cherokee Phoenix. Brad Carson, Cherokee, former Democratic U.S. congressman from Oklahoma. Ned Christie (1852–1892), statesman, Cherokee Nation senator, infamous outlaw. Admiral Joseph J. Clark (1893–1971), United States Navy, highest-ranking Native American in the U.S. military, awarded the Navy Cross. Doublehead Taltshuska (d. 1807), a war leader during the Cherokee American Wars, led the Lower Cherokee, signed land deals with U.S. Dragging Canoe Siugunsini (1738–1792), General of the Militant Cherokee during the Cherokee American Wars, Principal Chief of the Chickamauga or Lower Cherokee. Angel Goodrich, basketball player. Franklin Gritz, Cherokee artist, taught at Haskell Institute and served on the USS Franklin. Charles R. Hicks, D. 1827, veteran of the Red Stick War, second principal chief to Pathkiller in early 17th century, de facto principal chief from 1813 to 1827. Junaluska, C.A., 1775-1868, veteran of the Creek War, who saved President Andrew Jackson's life. Okanasota, Agansdata, beloved man, C.A., 1710 to 1783, war chief during the Anglo-Cherokee War. Ostanako, Ustanakwa, CA, 1703-1780, war chief, diplomat to Britain, founded the town of Ultiwa. Major Ridge Ganondalaji or Pathkiller, CA.1771-1839, veteran of the Cherokee American Wars and the Red Stick War, signer of the Treaty of New Ekota. John Ridge, Skatalowski, 1792-1839, son of Major Ridge, statesman, New Ekota Treaty signer. John Roland Ridge, Chisquatalani, or Yellow Bird, 1827-1867, grandson of Major Ridge, first Native American novelist. R. Lynn Riggs, 1899-1954, author, poet, and playwright. His play Green Grow the Lilacs was the basis of the Broadway hit Oklahoma. Clement V. Rogers (1839–1911), U.S. Senator, Judge, Cattleman, member of the Oklahoma Constitutional Convention. Will Rogers (1879–1935), entertainer, roper, journalist, and author. John Ross, Guwisgui (1790–1866), veteran of the Red Stick War, principal chief in the East during removal and in the West. Mary G. Ross (1908–2008), scientist and engineer, worked for NASA. Sequoia (CA) (1767–1843), inventor of the Cherokee syllabary. Nimrod Jarrett Smith, Saladihi (1837–1893), principal chief of the Eastern Band, Civil War veteran. Redbird Smith (1850–1918), traditionalist, political activist, and chief of the Nighthawk Kitua Society. Kimberly Teehee, Democratic White House Senior Policy Advisor for Native American Affairs William Holland Thomas 1805-1893, non-native but adopted into tribe, founding principal chief of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians, commanding officer of Thomas Legion of Cherokee Indians and Highlanders Tom Threepersons 1889-1969, Cherokee lawman from Veneta, Indian Territory James Van, C.A., 1765 1809, Scottish Cherokee, highly successful businessman and veteran of the Cherokee American Wars. Nancy Ward, Nanyehai, beloved woman, C.A., 1736 1822 quarters, member of the Chiefs Council, the Women's Council of Clan Representatives, served as ambassador and negotiator on behalf of the Cherokee. 
Stand Wadi, Degataga (1806–1871), signer of the Treaty of New Ekota, last Confederate general to cease hostilities in the American Civil War, as commanding officer of the First Indian Brigade of the Army of Trans Mississippi. John Martin Thompson (1829–1907), lumberman, Confederate major, chairman of the Texas Cherokees and associate bands after the death of William Penn Adair, Mount Tabor Indian community leader. See also Moon-eyed people Black drink Black Indians in the United States Booger dance One-drop rule Notes <laughs>